show. Hopefully you can see that slide okay there. So um, yes. this chat is, is really not about um, any um, particular technical discussion or uh, um, challenges that we've faced. Um, it's also aimed at those who are not aimed at those who are already publishing or close to publishing because you've already overcome lots of the challenges um, that we would have faced. But um, it's really just an encouragement for those of you who are, who are facing project challenges and some tips on how you can maximise your project's value. Hopefully it's not too much of a, a big jam presentation. Uh, Anne's keep telling us we're doing well, but uh, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to assess when you're when you're actually doing it yourself. So. Um, Time frame for our project was uh, is nine months. It started in September last year um, and is scheduled to finish in May this year. Um, the team, I just introduced my team here. We've got Lynn Davies. Um, Lynn's a um, metadata manager. She's uh, got a strong university background. Um, Lynn, do you want to just quickly say hello? Or? Oh, hello everyone. <laughs> um, my background is librarianship. I've worked on and off at UTAS as a librarian since the late 80s um, in a range of positions. So um, I was brought in as the person who had the bibliographic background and the liaison role between the librarians and also the researchers. And on my right here is uh, Sue Lee. Sue Lee's our technical officer. Sue Lee joined in November, so um, one, two, three months into the project. Um, and is, uh, she's a bit of a workhorse. She's, uh, she's, she's really good um, in technically and uh, She's also got a good background in uh, um, repositories already, haven't you? So, yes, yeah. uh, I was working in the library in 2011 mm. uh, as a library assistant officer. Mm. So that's where we just all about uh, my experience in the library. So it's actually really useful having a technical officer who uh, has an understanding of library systems already, and that, that was helpful for us in the project. Um, as Simon's already uh, mentioned, there have been four, pre four project managers on the project in the first four months. Um, that's uh, really not just not the project about a bit. Um, the reason for those four project managers are, are quite varied. The, the first one was uh, um, sort of, uh, was in the process of seeking work elsewhere while he was uh, in the process of writing up the initial project plan. So I guess his heart wasn't really in it. We then had a project manager who was really got in got stuck into it for a month, but unfortunately there was a, um, a, a restructure at work and she was taken off and put on on different projects. Um, her manager took on, uh, and because of, of that restructure, within a month, uh, his position was made redundant as well. So, um, at that point, Lynn was jumping up and down, saying, "We've got to get this fixed." So, I was brought in to um, try and get the project back on track, uh, and I joined in the week before Christmas, um, which is not a good week to be handing over your existing projects or to take on new stuff, because when you come back in the new year, you've pretty much forgotten everything that everybody told you about the new project you were starting. So, effectively, we were. Starting from scratch, uh, as of the start of this year, we did have a, a project plan, but it was un, unfinished. Um, we had no sustainability plan, which is a key, a key deliverable for ANS. We had no work breakdown schedule either, which was um, so really. Um, the, the guys today who have been working on the project had um, just tackling each um, issue one by one without any uh, key viewers to. to what they were aiming for, what they were trying to, to get to it at the end of the project. So, it, it isn't yeah. very reactive. You're yeah, quite yeah, right. So reactive, we, yeah. we reacted to problems yeah. without having any sort of proactive plan. Mm. At the point we came on board in, it, uh, I came on board at the end of December, start of January. Uh, our phase two deliverables were also due as well. So um, and uh, our budget had effectively been spent. We were four months into a project after our phase one uh, uh, funding, initial funding had been given. So uh, I guess you can see it was a, a bit of a challenge. And the other thing was, as a project manager, I was located in a completely different area of the of the, uh, of the campus, um, and, and that was going to be challenging as well. So uh, from from that respect, um, yeah, as you can see, the challenges were there. On the positives, we've got a good team. Um, I think we're all, we're all hardworking. At least we're told we are. We're all trustworthy, and that's not just trustworthy. In, in yeah, uh, I'll give you guys some money to you back. It's more trustworthy in in. Um, delegation in, in delegation of tasks. If I say to Lynn, I need this done, or if I go to Sue, I say, can you solve that technical problem? They go away and they solve it. Uh, and if they've got problems, they come back and they talk with me. So um, we understand each other, what our capabilities are. Um, I guess we're all accountable and responsible in what we do. And that is a really positive, positive thing for, for the team as well. And we've had an excellent ANS liaison officer um, who's been very responsive to our needs. That's uh, Lewis. 
Um, we can highly recommend him. Yes. <laughs> uh, his his knowledge um, about what, we're, what about the project and what we're trying to do is is second to none in our in our experience. Is um, if he doesn't know a uh, particular thing, he, he knows somebody who knows. So he said, oh, you need to go and talk to JCU. They have had that problem. They, they, they can help you in that respect. Or you need to go and talk to UniSA. They're doing things in the way that you're doing things. They can help you in that respect. That's, again, proved invaluable for us. Um, and the uh, team Redbox at QSIF, uh, Duncan and Andrew have been fantastic help as well. Um, they're really uh, responsive to Google Groups. If you're going to work them, work them through the Google Groups. So uh, that's the way they... Um, Work better. They've obviously got a very high workload in terms of trying to deal with a, a number of different uh, um, customers they're trying to support. Um, so uh, Q QCIP is there. Oh, sorry, um, the Google Groups is there for further methodology work. Um, use those guys; they're fantastic. Uh, and also the great user community. As I mentioned, Lewis says you need to talk to so and so. You can talk to this university or that university. Um, it's so useful to have other people who have been through problems or are experiencing the same problems, and if you share your, your issues with them. You put uh, you know, two two heads are better than one in effect. So um, having that um, uh, uh, knowledge available to, to us in UTAS has, has been really good. Um, and you, you guys, you know who you are. I mean, I, I won't mention the names, but uh, uh, yes, we have a lot of thank yous. Yeah, a lot of thank yous. Uh, there's about four or five universities who we've been leaning on, and, and they've been coming forward. Now, in terms, sorry, Lynn, so, so my recommendation to anybody who's um, feeling, still feeling their way is what I did when I was um, going through that process of changing project managers is I literally sent emails to a couple of people that I've seen or you know met through these webinars and they were fantastic. I had phone calls from people where they just went through problems over the phone. We had Skype um, communication and I had one where the librarian organised a technical person and another library person to come along and the three of them spent an hour on the phone just talking to me about different issues. So we'd love to reciprocate if anybody has any questions from you, Taz. Lynn, we found that um, the communication... Lynn, can I interrupt for a moment? Yes? Could you, people having a lot of trouble hearing you uh, because of the Bass Strait effect, <laughs> uh, can you just move as close to the mic as possible? Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah, that's better. Did you want me to repeat that? All I wanted to say was that um, during the period when I was effectively on my own, apart from having Louisa Dan's, I often sent an email to people that I'd met through these webinars asking questions and I've had fantastic feedback. A lot of them Skyped me or um, organised phone calls and just rang me out of the blue to assist. And so if there's anybody that is um, still feeling their way, I'd like to suggest, you know, that, that more than happy if we can assist. Or I found the user community within nationally, everybody's going through the same um, problems and we're all at a range of stages. And so you can feel quite um, panicky and isolated. And I think that's been a fantastic support, not only Anne's, but also um, other librarians or other technical managers or project managers that are going experiencing the same thing. So um, that's yep. just a, what I want to comment on. Okay. So, yeah. Other strategies? Other strategies are co-location. So if you're four months into a five-month project and you feel like you're starting from scratch, you've really got to get the communication flowing. Co-location does that. Um, so we're basically we're working out the same building now, uh, and for the first two or three weeks, I was actually sit, sitting next to Sue, getting my head into the red box space, the mint space. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's the only way you, you're going to um, break down those barriers to communication is to work in the same the same area. Um, the, the, the communication becomes more organic. You, you get quicker fixing of miscommunications. Um, you get cross pollination of ideas when you're working together out of the same place. Um, you could, you know, somebody else is having a phone call. You can you can hook into that and think, oh yeah, I understand what you're saying. That, that problem you are having now, and perhaps you, we can solve it in another way. Um, we have formal once a week meetings where we document everything we do, um, just just so that we we keep that record going and we can refer back to issues as well. Um, and 
being co-located also builds your team. I think you, you build up uh, interpersonal relationships, um, and that again is invaluable when you when you're under pressure, when you're under stress, and you need to try and solve problems. Um, everything we do goes on the wiki, um, so we use that SCN Confluence <coughs> um, for our information sharing outside the project, uh, which is also forward-looking as well. So that uh, at some point, the team will be disbanded as a project and we'll go into operational mode. At least everything we've discovered um, is available to that to the new team as they take as they take um, operational um, control of, of the, uh, the product. Um, it also makes things more discoverable and accessible, which is pretty much like a repository anyway. So this is some stuff over there. Um, <coughs> communication, uh, and Lynn sort of um, re referred to this already, work your hands liaison officer, <laughs> work the weekly clinics, um, work your product support team at Concusif, um, talk to your business stakeholders, and, and talk to your business users as well. So Lynn, that's probably a good segue to hand over to, to what you've been doing as a metadata manager. So. Okay, C can you hear me okay, Simon? Yeah, that's good. Keep, keep keep up the volume and closeness to the mic. Where's the microphone? <laughs> just call it. Oh, okay. Just call out if you can't hear, and I'll try and go slowly. Um, I've built all my slides, so pretty much everything I'm going to say hopefully will be on the slide. Um, my aim was to, my number one aim was to try and develop positive relationships, which could be built on um, after the project. So that included everyone from researchers, data managers, the research office, and even librarians within the library. So that was my number one aim, to field any negativity and to just start um, shifting the culture. John probably didn't mention, because we're in a, a short time frame here, but um, UTAS came on board with this nine month project that has been compressed basically to six months without having done any earlier ANS projects. So there is a big cultural shift that we have to, um, you know, we didn't do seeding the commons or data capture. Um, so because of the limited time, um, my approach was to look at quality, quality in everything I did um, over quantity in terms of um, how I approached the libraries and the librarians, um, who I saw as researchers and the number of published records. So I'm just going to touch on the three main areas, which is the library, the researchers, and the published records. You'll have so to, to do it quickly, with, Lynn. You'll have to be relatively quick because this is your first wind-up call. It's now 10, 16. Okay. From the library, um, we have about 16 liaison librarians. So I actually, rather than doing one PowerPoint, I did individual to um, small group upskill sessions, and then I did refreshers. So I decided to work at the cold face and um, work with them like that. And I found that worked really well. Then to all the library, I did internal newsletters. So everybody knew what was happening once a quarter. And I attended as many library meetings as I could. So in terms of researchers, my data interview approach was to look for um, champions. And also, we received a spreadsheet that had all current and completed um, grants which included beyond ARC and NHMRC. So the liaison librarians um, could choose who they want to go and see. We also met, as John pointed out, we met with research office, the RDSI infrastructure staff and all data managers to inform them about the project and also learn. And then we also visited the Antarctic division because I've got a world's best practice data centre just to be inspired about where we want to go for in the future. And then finally, um, the aim for published records was the liaison librarians are going to try and go out and do data interviews with all the schools and centres that they represent to get sort of a sample record. And we're also looking at trying to get two imports from two different um, subject areas to just try and um, get people thinking about automatic imports as well as manual records. Okay, thanks Lynn. I'll skip through because she's a bit nervous and we're short of time. So I'll just go on to some other project value adds. Um, you okay with that, Sue? Yeah, yes. <laughs> she's very happy. Um, for us, uh, in Institute of Marine and Aquatic Sciences, they, they've come on board and are very keen to start using our service. They've got some huge data sets. Um, uh, and once we get one of our big customers like IMAS on board, and that encourages the other institutes and schools to get on board as well. I know um, Institute have got some large. 
uh, data sets which are keen to get uh, into the red box system and also the central science laboratory have got a lot of stuff as well. Um, hooks into RDSI, research data, storage infrastructure. Um, and this has really come through from IMAS as well. They're big users or they're going to be big users of RDSI, so they're very keen to get uh, links in that respect. Um, there's a couple of visions they've got there in terms of um, uh, researchers depositing data and um, our project getting an automatic note that the data is there and perhaps there needs to be some uh, a description of that data going up to RDSI. Uh, um, one of the key things that we're trying to get going with this, with this project is, is strategic renewal. Um, senior management become aware of the, the, the trends and some ideas and how this project can be used to, to kick the further research uh, support initiatives. So um, the library in, in fact has now started talking with our research office. They're saying, hey, there's some things happening out there. We're getting a little bit behind. Our current infrastructure is looking a bit stale. Let's use this particular project as a springboard onto something bigger. Let's get some, some serious governance in place uh, with the IT services, the library. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a key thing we're going to take out of this, this project. Just summing up, um, four, four key points there. Don't just focus on the details or the deliverables. Look for some big picture stuff to, to value add and raise your project profile. Ask lots of questions as, as per Lynn. She says, get out there, talk to people. It's far easier to get them from somebody else's. Uh, from, to get things from somebody else, you then to work it out for yourself sometimes. Document and communicate, and finally get up from your desk and go and talk to someone because it's basically it's people do projects, not project plans. Um, and that's uh, we're done. So <laughs> hopefully, we managed to, to to get that all done in your time. So I'll, I'll hand back to you, Simon. Um,